Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In today's video, I will be showing you how to write code with ChatGPT and expanding on the use of classes and modular programming to improve your workflow. This is the fourth video in my series on writing code for microcontrollers with ChatGPT. First, I want to talk a little bit about the foundation of modular or compartmentalized programming why and how it became so important, and why I think it will become even more important moving forward with AI-assisted programming. In the early days of computer programming, one programmer could handle the responsibility of an entire project. As computer technology expanded and gained complexity, so too did computer programs. This created the need for teams of programmers to be able to work on a project together and share the workload. Early efforts involved things such as functions to break a program down into manageable sized chunks of code. This was not optimum as there could be conflicts with things such as naming or variables, and the entire program had to be tested as a unit. Enter object-oriented programming and classes. With object-oriented programming, each piece of code is completely independent, has private naming and variables, can be tested independently of the entire program, and makes it easy for a team of programmers to collaborate. Several advanced methods of organizing teams of programmers and projects have become popular. A common group of these methods are called Agile. The Agile methods are specifically designed for helping people to work together, so I won't delve too deeply into them. But if you're serious about programming, especially with a team, I suggest you look into these methods. What we need to focus on when working with AI and modular programming is breaking the job down into easily definable chunks and the human programmer transitioning from the role of coder to project manager and senior programmer. I'm going to oversimplify this to make it easy to get results as fast as possible. The first thing you need to do is think in terms of the overall project and goals without even concerning yourself with the programming. For the example I'm going to cover in this video, I want to have multiple flashing patterns for the built-in LED. Specifically, I want the LED to flash Morse code patterns. I want to be able to set the pattern by communicating with the microcontroller through the serial port, and I want the microcontroller to tell me through the serial port what flashing pattern the LED is performing. I tried to get ChatGPT to generate the complete program with classes, and specified exactly that the first few times I asked it to generate the code. I did not like the results as it was all in simple code, no classes, and it seemed like the code was too much of a mess to easily work with. So I simplified the problem for ChatGPT to steer it in the direction I wanted it to go. I phrased my request like this. Write an Arduino sketch for the Pro Mini. I want to have multiple flashing patterns for the built-in LED. I want to be able to set the pattern by communicating with the microcontroller through the serial port. And I want the microcontroller to tell me through the serial port what flashing pattern the LED is performing. At first, ChatGPT would only generate simple code, but then I asked a follow-up question. I asked it to break the already generated code down into classes. This time it was successful and generated a few classes and the required Arduino sketch to use them. The code is very simple and changes the rate that the built-in LED flashes according to a predefined value and setup. This is a fairly good starting point for the program. It should have the basic functionality, but cannot do things such as having the complex patterns of Morse code messages. If you notice, I did not specify that I wanted the flashing patterns to be so complicated, only that I wanted different patterns. It is normal for a program to go through iterations during development, and to change from a running skeleton or rough sketch to a fully fleshed out project. This is exactly what we are doing, working through the design process with the AI. I would have gave it the full specifications to begin with, but in the first attempt it could not even adapt for classes. It had to generate a rough draft in simple code, then break the code down into classes, then it was able to begin refining the classes. ChatGPT seems to behave just like any programmer, building a project on the progress of the project. It is great at starting with a small skeleton or framework of a program and building from there. Now that the program is built into classes, if any changes need to be made in the future, simply open ChatGPT, open the conversation, and ask it to make the required changes. If more unrelated functionality is required, you can always start a new conversation and generate classes independently of the original conversation. There are other ways to tackle program creation. Sometimes quick, simple code is best to get a project running as fast as possible. 
Sometimes reusable code and expandability is paramount. Some programmers do not like to use classes and always stick with simple C and functions. I prefer that method for teaching the basis of programming. There is no wrong method when programming with the assistance of AI right now. Though I am sure in the near future, the experts will say it must be done only one way. Finally, I asked ChatGPT to add the ability to flash Morse code for the patterns. It turned out pretty nice. The code looked well organized. The last thing to do is copy the code into an Arduino project and see if it works. I created a new sketch in Arduino and saved it with a unique name. I clicked the down arrow on the right side of the Arduino IDE and clicked Add Tab. I gave the tab a unique name followed by the .h identifier to indicate a header file. I copied the classes from the ChatGPT conversation into the tab in the Arduino IDE. I copied the Arduino sketch from the conversation with ChatGPT and pasted it into the sketch in the Arduino IDE. Next, I selected the correct board from the Tools menu. I clicked the Verify Code button to see if there were any errors in the source code. Once it compiled fine, I then connected the Arduino board to the computer. If you're using the Pro Mini, connect the board to the serial adapter and the adapter to the computer. Make sure the correct COM port is selected in the Tools menu. I clicked the Upload Sketch button. In a few moments, the board started flashing Morse code. I opened the serial monitor and made sure everything was working. If you are following along, congratulations! You have just expanded your ability to use ChatGPT to program microcontrollers and are getting more familiar with object-oriented programming and classes. In the next video, I'm going to talk about pivoting from microcontrollers to other devices using AI-assisted programming. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching.